Hello everyone, we're back again with another critique video. Today on the channel, we have Elate Nutrition. I have had to critique this person once before, and also I have had comment disputes with this person on Instagram, who believes himself to be basically a know-it-all. He's a nutritionist, which is your first sign to not listen to any f thing he has to say about anything at all, really, but especially nutrition. And it's a damn shame that we have people like this denigrating and disparaging the carnivore diet, and not only that, but also giving people health advice. It really is a problem. So we're just going to jump directly into this. Of course, first, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Patreon to gain access to one week early uploads, ad free content, uncensored content, and one extra video per week. And also, buy my book Contraindicated if you haven't already. And with that being said, now let's jump directly into this. I'm an Oakland-based nutritionist, and I'm here. Okay, Oakland-based nutritionist, whatever. Let's look at the little sticker here. Suggestion of health slash nutrition-related topics you'd like to learn. That's a question he posed his audience. Someone says, diabetes type 2. Diabetes type 2, type 2 diabetes, is a disease, well, all diabetes itself is a disease characterized by chronically elevated blood glucose and nothing else. It is explicitly and exclusively defined and measured as such. That is it, okay? The most conducive way of ameliorating type 2 diabetes is getting rid of the cause of it, which is carbohydrate consumption. You cannot find someone that has type 2 diabetes, truly pathological type 2 diabetes, that is not consuming carbohydrates to some degree. I just covered this with an Abby Sharp video I did a little while ago. Go check that out, please. So let's see what this man has to say about type 2 diabetes. Talk about the kind of chronic illnesses that are affecting our low-income communities. One of the major health concerns, it's not just low income communities, that we see pretty often in our communities is diabetes. According to statistics, about 10.7% of our population is affected by diabetes. And if you're not aware as to what diabetes is, this will be good. See if you guess this right. I'll explain it to you briefly. There's two main types of diabetes. We have correct type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Correct. But what is the difference between them? In short, type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune condition leading to a lack of insulin, and it's usually diagnosed when you're younger. Okay, so, correct, but that is completely failing to mention the fact that type 2 diabetes trends towards type 1 for a reason. It seems to be the case that the beta cells of the pancreas, the cells responsible for secreting insulin into the bloodstream, if you constantly spike and trough, spike and trough your blood glucose levels, they tend to fatigue, okay? The beta cells tend to fatigue. They have a limited capacity, it seems, to secrete sufficient insulin. It's one of the reasons why the elevated blood glucose becomes chronic, one of them. Anyway. And the medical treatment for type 1 diabetes usually requires insulin injections. I believe it just is required, necessarily. On the other hand, we have type 2 diabetes, which usually develops in adulthood, and it's due to insulin resistance. Okay, so insulin resistance is an idea. What do I mean by it's a construct, it's a concept, it's an idea? What do we actually mean by that? What we mean by that is it's a way to represent what is actually occurring in the body. I don't like the term personally, and I'll get to why in a second. Insulin resistance can either be properly elucidated and explained, or it can be improperly elucidated and explained. Insulin resistance is usually interchangeable with carbohydrate intolerance, which is even worse of a term, by the way. But anyway, the erroneous, the incorrect elucidation of what insulin resistance is, is that it is some sort of tinnitus. What do I mean by that? It is often purported to be the case that within an insulin resistant scenario, insulin is outside the cell trying to administer glucose into it, but the cell has some sort of tinnitus to insulin. It doesn't know that it's there, and so it needs help sequestering that glucose at the behest of insulin. That is false. Not only is that false, that's actually a dangerous ideology, which is actually why I don't even like the term in the first place. This is how you get drugs like metformin. What is actually happening in an insulin resistant scenario is that the cell that insulin is outside trying to administer glucose into is purposely disallowing entry of glucose into it. Now, why would that be the case? Well, because glucose inside a cell is vastly toxic first and foremost. However, that's not the primary reason. What is occurring is a cross inhibition of fatty acids within the cell and glucose within the cell. It's called the Randall cycle. Now, when this occurs, the beta oxidation pathway, you could say, let's include the process by which fat actually enters the cell as part of that pathway. That side of the equation, so to speak, when acetyl CoA concentrations rise too high, start to inhibit the glycolytic pathway, the pathway by which glucose enters the cell to be converted into energy. One of the primary effects of that is the inhibition of the GLUT4 transporters on cell membranes. This prevents glucose from entering the cell. It is doing that to protect itself from damage that it would incur from glucose. And the way we can infer that is because in that situation, both substrates are prevented from entering the mitochondria, but only one of the substrates, that being glucose, is prevented from 
entering the cell. Fat actually can still enter the cell and does, and it pools in the cell because fat is completely innocuous and benign to a cell. You can actually see this in a microscope as fatty droplets within the cells. It's a Randall cycle situation, which is the result of consuming a mixed diet or a mixed meal, at least, of fat and carbohydrates together. It also causes inflammation because it decreases the redox potential of the mitochondria, which therefore decreases the cellular redox potential, leads to a buildup of inorganic phosphate within the cell, which necessarily causes inflammation. Okay, and that's because of a decrease of acetyl-CoA concentrations due to the cross inhibition and blah, 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 whatever. That's what insulin resistance actually is. It is a concept. It is a construct. Really, it just needs to be represented properly, and it's not. It's not tinnitus at all. Okay. Ben Bickman, Dr. Ben Bickman, or Professor Ben Bickman, has also suggested that adipocytes themselves have a finite capacity to store triglycerides. If that is the case, that is another cause and would be another cause of insulin resistance because then the glucose just physically cannot enter that cell to be transmuted into more fat. Anyway, it is a theory, I believe. I'd have to look into it myself to see if that's even the case. That would be another explanation. Type 2 diabetes is initially managed with a lifestyle change. This involves physical activity, and a diet change. Yes, correct. Particularly diet change. So far, so good. Elate. However, when type 2 diabetes usually progresses, you might require the need of medication or insulin injections. Okay, so here is the problem. Why would it progress? What is causing the progression? What is the actual pathology? Because here's the thing. Type 2 diabetes is pathological, meaning it does lead to more pathology down the line. Yes, it does. Mechanistically, absolutely. However, glucose spikes and troughs and spikes and troughs. That's not a pathology. That's exactly what your body is supposed to do. By the way, that's what insulin resistance is as well. Insulin resistance is not a pathology. That's like calling a fever a pathology and not the flu. And really, even then, that's not a pathology. That's what your body is supposed to do. The pathology is the antigen contraction. That's the pathology. The antigen itself doing damage. The pathology with respect to type 2 diabetes is the active consumption of the contraindicated compound known as carbohydrate, okay? It's unnecessary for human consumption and human survival because of gluconeogenesis, and also necessarily, absolutely, invariably, causes damage to the body at a dose-response level above a physiological concentration within the blood, which is most auspiciously achieved by consuming the substance. You actually will not have that occur through gluconeogenesis because gluconeogenesis is a demand-driven process. You can make it supply-driven for a very ephemeral amount of time by consuming a massive amount of protein, but you still will not get the deleterious effects to the same degree that you would if you consumed the carbohydrates exogenously. Carbohydrates are a contraindicated metabolic poison, actually, really. Okay, let's just call it what it is. And if you're somebody who is interested in diabetes management, make sure you include these three things on your diet. Okay, this is, will be real, real, real fun. Watch it be carbohydrates. Who wants to bet? You know what? How about we just take a moment and just guess. What is this going to be? Are they going to be carbohydrates? I think so. Let's find out. Make sure that you exchange white bread for whole grain bread. There it is. <sighs> Okay, so basically the notion being the glycemic index nonsense, which is a complete fallacy. It is based upon a fallacy, at least. That being that you could, first of all, measure a food's glycemic effect on an entire population, first and foremost. But also based on a fallacy that you can even measure the glycemic effect of a food on one person invariably. That varies how much sleep the person got the night before, whether they're menstruating or not, if they're a woman, for example. That also affects things. Okay, the time of day that it is. All of these things affect it. So instead of looking at the glycemic index, why don't you just realize that carbohydrates are what is the cause of diabetes, and instead of trying to blunt a glucose spike or something, stop consuming the very thing that's causing the issues. Make sure that you start eating more fruits and vegetables. Right, so fruits being replete and teeming with sugar. Good. Sucrose, fructose, glucose, sorbitol, by the way, which has an osmotic force and will actually increase in concentration in high blood sugar events as well and cause cells to burst. That's cool. That's great. Vegetables are also not indicated for human consumption. First of all, they're not necessary once again, and they also are teeming with toxins. Look into lectins, look into phytates, look into oxalates, look into glucosinolates, look into sulforaphane, even. Look into glycoalkaloids. Look into sarin nerve gas and how that's produced. Goodness. And also make sure you start adding some protein into your meals. Okay, so you say some protein. You didn't even say animal protein because that matters too. Did you know lectins are proteins? Plant proteins. How much of that are you absorbing? I mean, 80%, 70, 80% of the protein in wheat is gluten. How much of that are you absorbing and utilizing? And how much of it is actively damaging you? It's, it's quite a bit. It's just ridiculous. Notice the one thing he didn't say was red meat and telling you to eliminate the carbohydrates. Propagandist, nonsensical, obsequious lickspittle. That's what you are, sir. And I will be sending you this video, just like I sent you the other one that you said you watched. You said you watched it. That's fantastic. It really is. You'll be watching this one too, I bet. Now, will you be learning something? Probably not. If you're somebody who's interested in managing their chronic disease through diet, make sure that you speak to a dietitian or- Absolutely f-
not. Dietitians are the last people that you should be taking nutrition advice from. The second last is nutritionists. It seems to be the case that nutritionists sometimes know a little more. It's weird, but they're pretty much the exact same with respect to their integrity and veracity. It's absolute nonsense. The things you spew. Wow. No, speaking to someone that actually does know what they're talking about with respect to biochemistry, anatomy even, just knows the body. Chemistry. Okay? Care provider first. Right, healthcare provider. Good. So, also indoctrinated shills. Okay, so you clearly do not understand the ideology of diabetes, clearly, and you're just an ideological puppet that is controlled by the ventriloquists at the upper echelons of authority in society. Good. Okay, well, elate, I look forward to you watching this video. Given how rude and insensitive and inconsiderate you are in comment sections, I've now decided to make it public this time. So, enjoy that. With that being said, anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, please subscribe to the channel, and please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And also, once again, subscribe to the Patreon if you have already and buy my book contraindicated a cultural look and revision of mainstream health axioms that have perpetuated illness disorder and disease for over a century if you haven't bought that book already and also most importantly the link at the bottom of the screen what is that link well that is a link that will bring you to an amazing site with amazing products from an amazing brand known as cerule if you purchase product through that link you will get a permanent 10 percent discount and a permanent free shipping discount on all of your orders when signing up for monthly deliveries and also if you email me at eggcookie14 at gmail.com behind the scenes i can tell you how to earn those products for free because who in their right mind wouldn't want that if you want to learn more about about those products, which even if you didn't, I would suggest that you do so before buying anything at all. I would refer to the link in the top right corner of the screen, the Cerule products link, which is a complete elucidation and complete explanation of what those products are, who should take them, why you should take them, when to take them, etc, etc. And I would also further migrate to the description below to find a video between myself and Professor Bart K on these products in further detail, as well as the company of Cerule itself. And if you are someone that would like to donate to my channel, but you are only someone that wants to give a one-time donation, I do now have two platforms available that are both linked in the description that allow you to donate one-time donations. There is a PayPal donation link, and there is also a GoFundMe donation link as well. And also, finally, once again, email me at eggcookie14 at gmail.com if you have any questions regarding anything at all. And with that being said, join me next time when someone else is, well, not as arrogant as elite nutrition, because that seems to be a feat that is indomitable. So, till then.